Aloha, and welcome to another edition of Aloha's Collector's Corner. I am your host and collector, Aloha Mr. Han, a.k.a. the man of uh, questionable character, and this is brought to you by our friends at the Sadistic Penguin Studio. So today I wanted to go through some of the stuff that I have added to my collection, as well as some old stuff as well. Plus, there's a couple football nuggets in there since football season is upon us, both college and pro. Uh, as you know, I started doing this during the pandemic just as a way to try and inventory my collection, which I found out was much larger than I thought. And I've come across some nuggets, but that hasn't stopped me from adding on to it as well. So with all that being said, let's get into it. So the last couple weeks have been pretty good. Uh, I've been able to do a couple things. There's been a couple signings, one last week and one this week, one earlier today, as a matter of fact, that I saw a couple friends out at. But last week, there was a signing with A.J. Perzinski at the Baseball Card King shop in Downers Grove. So I did not attend that in person, but I did drop off a couple of items. And the item I want to show is something I think is awesome. It's very specific. And let me show so this is a ticket from Game 2 of the American League Championship Series. Watch it, look at my pretty face. And you can see it's autographed by AJ with two inscriptions. The first is Drop Third Strike, which happened in the bottom of the ninth. And the second is I Stole First. It's a joke, somewhat, but he was more than happy to sign it. I love this. I'm trying... Going into the next ticket I'm going to show is a project I'm working on. The next ticket completes three-fourths of it. And I'll explain that in a second. But this one needs one more signature, and I'll complete that other project as well. So the next ticket I'm going to show is from Game 4 of the American League Championship Series in 2005. Now, we know that was a Saturday night in Anaheim, Saturday, October 15th. And we know that... Freddy Garcia threw the third of four complete games. It was Burley in this game, then Garland, then Freddy, then Contreras to win the AL pennant. Now, I have the Contreras ticket side. I have the Garland ticket side. Now I have the Freddy ticket side. As you can see, Freddy Garcia, complete game, October fifteenth, two 2005. This is a keeper. I will eventually get this slabbed at PSA and go from there. Uh, let me see if I could find the uh, Contreras ticket. No, I can't at this moment, so we'll just go on. And then the other item I got signed by Freddie Garcia was the, the one I can say, in all honesty, the one regret I have. Um, there's a lot of regrets as a White Sox fan, but the one regret I have for something good. And that is a signed ticket from Game 4 of the 2005 World Series. I got him to autograph it. A little hard to see with the color and everything else. Uh, but it's a Freddy autograph with World Series champs October 26, 2005. Greatest day in Chicago sports history. Fuck you if you think anything else. But so my eventual goal is to have all four of the complete games signed by the pitcher who completed them. I have three of them down. Burley's the one. And doesn't look like Burley's coming anytime soon. So hopefully I'll complete that someday. So the next is a couple of tickets I just got back from PSA that I had recently graded. Uh, the grades didn't turn out as nice as I would have liked or expected it to. But there's still significant game tickets, if you ask me. This is a ticket from... Game three of the 1989 World Series. As you can see, everyone knows what this game is. This was the earthquake game. This is the game at 5.06 Pacific time, 7.06 Central, where the earthquake hit in San Francisco, causing catastrophic damage and forcing the delay of the World Series for about a week and a half. The thing about that, I remember okay, videotaping that game. I still have the videotape, I do, and it goes black and ABC, and it was on ABC, and they post a a uh, thing that says the World Series ABC, and it's black for it's 
blank for, or I should say there's no sound for a little bit. Then Al Michaels comes back on and they start talking about what's going on and everything else. And then they switch to a rerun of Roseanne. I'm not the biggest Roseanne fan, so I don't know which episode or anything like that. I always didn't, I didn't think she was funny. That's just my opinion. Politics has nothing to do with it. So next I want to move on to a game that Yogi Berra had one of the greatest quotes of all time. And it's a record-setting game, by the way. Uh, Yogi Berra's quote, after the game when he faced the pitcher who threw this game, who threw a complete game, by the way, uh, was, I know how he, I see how he won 25 games. I don't understand how he lost three. That's right. It's game one of the 1963 World Series. You can see there, you can see where the ticket had been torn and everything else. But it's game one. Significance of this game, Sandy Koufax set a record at the time for 15 strikeouts in a World Series game. And if you ever go watch the 1963 World Series film, which I have, you, you will be amazed by it, how, how feeble he makes the Yankees look. And these are the Yankees of Mantle and Maris. Uh... Mantle, you know, Mantle had won the 62 AL MVP, his third. Maris had won 60, had won it in 60 and 61. Yogi Berra had three, 51, 54, and 55. And then Elston Howard won it in 63 for the Yankees. But they were no match to the two-headed monster. Well, I mean, the Dodgers were a good team. And Moose Gowran was, was traded by the Yankees to the Dodgers after the 62 season to make room for Joe Pepitone, who Kramer threw at. And they were no match for the two-headed monster of Sandy Koufax and Don Drysdale. Koufax won, Koufax won games one and four and made it look easy, to be honest with you. In all honesty, and that's why Koufax is called the left arm of God. In all honesty, if there was one player, one, who A, I would like to meet... And B, I would like to have seen in his prime, it's Sandy Koufax. Um, I've never had the fortune of meeting him. I've met, you know, I've met Hank Aaron. I've met, I've met Willie Mays. I've met a whole slew of Griffey Jr. I've met a lot of them, but I've never had the, the fortune of meeting Mr. Koufax. So that's one thing on my bucket list is to meet Mr. Koufax. The next ticket I have here is from the... 1977 All-Star Game at, at the time, new Yankee Stadium. As you know, Yankee Stadium, after the 73 season, was closed for two seasons and gutted and rehabbed and rebuilt, basically. The, the Yankees played two seasons at Shea Stadium, which had to be pretty awkward. That would be like the Cubs playing at guaranteed rate or the Sox playing at Wrigley. It had to be incredibly awkward uh, for that to happen. And the Yankees, the new Yankee Stadium opened in 1976, and the Yankees won the AL pennant, lost in a sweep in the World Series to the to the Cincinnati Reds. Johnny Bench MVP, yeah baby, that's my man, right right there, that's my man. Um, but 77 All Star Game was hosted there. Obviously, baseball even back then wanted to get some shine on the new park, so they had it there. And the, the National League won and continued their dominance for the 1970s uh, with a final score of 7-6. to six. Don Sutton, a pitcher for the Dodgers, was the MVP of that game. So moving on to the next item is a unique item that actually, wait a second, wait a second, tomorrow is the anniversary of, tomorrow is the anniversary of, because... Yeah, tomorrow's the anniversary. I had to make sure. Tomorrow is August 5th, so I had to uh, make sure I had my dates right. But this is a ticket from Frank Thomas's fourth game as a professional. Autographed by Frank, he got his third hit and his first career double in this game. Obviously, they played in Milwaukee. Interesting tidbit on this. He made his debut. He was wearing jersey number 15. And Frank Thomas's first hit, believe it or not, was a triple. And the reason it was a triple is because it hit the top of the wall and bounced back into the park. If it was like two inches higher, 
It's a home run. He has a home run for his first hit. But no, it's a triple. And if you look on YouTube, the video of it is there, and you will see he is wearing number 15, not number 35. So the next ticket I have is one of baseball's most famous moments. Most famous moments. I might have shown this before without the PSA slab on it. So if I did, forgive me. But this is a ticket from Game 1 of the 1988 World Series signed by Kirk Gibson. That's him on top. And this scribble over here is Dennis Eckersley. And you'll see the inscription on the bottom. Game 1, 1988 World Series walk-off home run. And legend has it that... The term walk-off was invented in this game by Dennis Eckersley in the post-game press conference. When he made the line, I threw it, he hit it, I walked off. That is the legend of it. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's a legend. That's really the first time I can ever remember hearing it. If you heard it before that, please feel free to let me know. Uh, the next are a couple more significant baseball historic events. Uh, very significant, very important events. The first is on an October night in 1977, October 18th to be precise, Mr. October was born. That's right. Game six of the 1977 World Series, autographed by Reggie Jackson. You see, 19, you see Mr. October and 1977 World Series MVP. It was his second MVP. He was also MVP in the 1973 World Series for the Oakland A's when they defeated the New York Mets in seven. The significance of that game, Reggie batted four times, okay, four. He received a walk his first time up. So it doesn't technically count as an at-bat since it's a walk. The next three at-bats, one pitch, gone, one pitch, gone, one pitch, gone. Each home run. And I believe the pitchers, I know the final pitcher was Charlie, Charlie Huff. I know he was the guy who gave up the, the, the moonshot blast in the eighth inning, I want to say it was, bottom of the eighth. The other two pitchers, I, uh, one is Elias Sosa, and I believe the other is Doug Rau, R-A-U, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I have to go back and look. But three pitchers, three pitches, three home runs. Not a bad night's work. At that time... The only other player who did it, and who did it twice, Babe Ruth. Since I can think of two players right off the top of my head that have done it, one is a surefire Hall of Famer, and the other, no chance in hell. The surefire Hall of Famer, once he reaches the five-year eligibility mark, Albert Pujols did it in the 2011 World Series, I believe it was. And the other player who did it, well, in the 2012 World Series, I want to say, was the Panda Bear, uh, Sandoval, Pablo Sandoval, the other player who's hit three home runs in a World Series, which is quite an impressive feat if you think about it. So moving on, I have a couple of football tickets here, uh, a couple of different things. Three of them relate to the beloved bear. Uh, the first is something's is significant for two different factors. This is a ticket from, uh, what's the date on this? It's October 13th, 1985. The Bears went into San Francisco to avenge their loss in the 84 uh, NFC Championship game. The significance of this game is not only the fact that it was a game for the 85 Bears when they got revenge against the Niners for 84, it was Jerry Rice's first NFL start. That's right. Jerry Rice's first career start was against the 85 Bears. And by the way, this game is available on YouTube to watch. Also, the Dallas game from later this year is available on YouTube to watch. It's awesome. I've been trying to find a ticket from that game. I've been unlucky so far. Can't find, can't find a thing. Uh, moving on. As I said, this is a little football theme for a couple more. Uh, I have... Perhaps one of the most famous college games of all time. It's a game that goes by a name. All you need to say is the name and everyone knows what you're talking about. 
it was October 15th, 1988, which is quite, quite, there's quite symmetry on that date because not only was October 15th the date of the football game I'm going to show you, it was also the date of this game. Game one of the 1988 World Series happened on the same day. The football game was in the afternoon. This was at prime time. That football game, all you need to know is a name. Catholics versus convicts. 31 to 30. Notre Dame beats the Miami Hurricanes 31 to 30 on a failed two-point attempt at the end of the game. That's it. Yes, the grade is not the best, but you know, you know what this game is? Notre Dame fan, Notre Dame hater, this game is an important game in football history. And if you ever get the chance, go and watch the Catholics vs. Convicts 30 for 30. It's well worth your time. Two hours, mind you, well worth your time. So the next college game ticket I have is from the Game of the Century. Or one of the games of the century. Because let's face it, just about every year there was a Game of the Century. This was on November 13th. 1993 and featured and the final score was 31 to 24 Notre Dame over Florida State that's right Notre Dame over Florida State and Notre Dame became Florida State was number one Notre Dame went to number one lost the next week at, against Boston College both teams won their bowl game Florida State was given a national title because the writers wanted to suck Bobby Bowden's cock after all his failures, and they felt pity for the guy, so they gave him a national title. I still don't think they should have won it, but that's neither here nor there at this point. And it would have been much easier if Nebraska had just won their bowl game. If Nebraska wins their bowl game, they're undefeated. This doesn't even matter. But Nebraska, with that. Uh, so moving on. Two more tickets for football-wise. These are both for the Beloved. The Beloved Bear. The first one was on, I want to say it was January 5th. Yes, January 5th, 1986. Sean Landetta tries to kick a, tries to punt a ball, whiffs, Bears score a touchdown. Bears go on to beat the New York Giants 21 to nothing. That's right. On their way to the NFC title game, which is this ticket. That's right. January 12th, 1986, NFC Championship. The Bears beat the Rams 24 to nothing. And I'll never forget Wilbur Marshall picking up that fumble, running it in as the snow comes down, and let the party begin. Two more items I want to show off. I've been on for 18 minutes. Let me try and do this quick. Two more items real quick. These are both uh, autographed items uh, because I think they're cool and I want to show them off because I can't. The first is a uh, Perez Steel Hall of Fame card. Uh, you've seen me show these before. This one is of Tom Seaver. That's right, the franchise. He was called the franchise. This is the guy that made the Mets the Mets. This is the guy who won the 1969 Cy Young Award, leading the Mets to the World Series title. He also won a Cy in 73 when he led the Mets to Game 7 of the World Series against the Oakland A's, and they lost, and 75. Three size. One is 300th game. Wait, wait, wait for it. I think today's the anniversary of his 300th win in Yankee Stadium, pitching for the White Sox. And baseball went on strike the next day for a couple days. Same day as, as Tom Seaver uh, got his 300th victory, Rod Crew got his 3,000th hit. Same day. Ba weird baseball symmetry there, I know. And then the last one, this is a guy when he was alive who had to be introduced as the greatest living baseball player. He wasn't. No offense to him. He was great. He was legendary. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. How the fuck he didn't go in with 100% of the vote, just like how Willie Mays didn't go in with 100%. Hank Aaron didn't go in with 100%. You know, the list goes on and on. How all these, Seaver didn't go in with 100%. Griffey Jr., I mean, you know, how all these guys didn't go in with 100% is beyond me. I'm not going to go there, though, but Jilton Joe DiMaggio. I respect the guy for the simple fact that he was married to Marilyn Monroe. What red-blooded American man wouldn't want to be? With that, 
that's all I have. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any requests or anything, let me know. I'll see what I have. I can't guarantee, but I'll see what I have. Thanks a lot for watching, and aloha.